Kids. I missed you over the weekend. Um, today is Monday, um, so happy Monday. And it's March 30th. It's day 12 of missing my kiddos. 12 days, my friends. I have missed you. Ugh. And we still have a whole other month to go. Oi. So I want to start doing Zoom with my students. So I want your parents to copy down my email and I want them to contact me and put um, the student name in the subject so that I can send you the link to the Zoom. So this is my email. Please make sure you're spelling Mackenzie right. There's a billion different ways to spell it, but it's nine letters, M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E. -E. That is a hyphen. And then Miller, of course, and then at turlonk.k12.ca.us. So please contact me through email and I will send you the link to Zoom. I don't know when we're gonna do it, but I'm ready to start because I miss my kids. Okay, so we're still reading Beverly Cleary's Henry and the Paper Route. If you remember last time, he got a kitten. Hmm, huh, that was an interesting one. So this time, it's Henry and the Advertisements. No, just Henry's Advertisements. Sorry about that. Chapter 3. The more Henry thought about doing something important, the more he wanted a paper route of his own. Every afternoon after school, he rode his bicycle slowly past Mr. Capper's garage on Knott Street where the journal truck dropped bundles of newspapers for about a dozen boys to deliver. He listened to the boys laughing and talking while they untied their bundles and counted and folded their papers. Henry wanted, wanted more than anything else to be one of those boys. And then one Tuesday after school, Scooter McCarthy stopped Henry by the bicycle rack and said, Say, Huggins, I'd like to go for a swim at the Y this afternoon, and I won't have time unless I get somebody to fold papers for me. How about you? Remember that when we did the YMCA, that one, that is where he's going to um, go swimming and stuff. Is that the Y? He just shortened it. You really mean it, Scooter? Asked Henry eagerly, even though he had been thinking of swimming at the Y himself. All your papers? Sure, said Scooter, pulling the canvas bag with read the journal printed on it off the back fender of his bike and handing it to Henry. Just put them in the bag and leave them in Mr. Capper's garage and I'll get them in time to deliver them. So here's a picture of the journal bag. That afternoon, Henry was sure that this time he was getting close to a paper route. Never had any paper boy done a better job of folding papers and sure enough, just as Henry had hoped, Mr. Capper noticed him. What's happened to Scooter? He asked. Henry explained his arrangement with Scooter and was a little disappointed when Mr. Capper didn't say anything more. He did not stop hoping, however, and after that he folded papers for Scooter once a week while Scooter went swimming at the YMCA. One Tuesday, when Scooter was late, Mrs. McCarthy came in the car to deliver his papers. Henry made up his mind that when he had his own paper route, he would never let his mother deliver papers. Not the way his mother threw. While folding Scooter's papers, Henry got to know the other journal carriers. Of course, he still was not one of the gang, like, like kind of accepted in their group, but he was getting closer. When I get a route of my own, he now had the courage to say, I'm going to save up and buy a real sleeping bag. Or, when I get my route, I bet I can have all the papers delivered by 5.30. He talked about getting a route at home, too, and to his friends at school. One Tuesday morning, several weeks after Henry had been regularly folding papers on Scooter's swimming day, Scooter spoke to him at the bicycle rack before school. Say, Huggins, he said, how would you like to deliver my papers for me after school today? Henry looked at Scooter to see if he really meant it. Quite plainly, he did. A chance to really deliver papers instead of just folding them and then watching the other boys start off on their routes? Here was his chance to impress Mr. Capper. But Henry did not want to appear too eager. How come? He asked casually as he snapped his bicycle padlock. If I get someone to take my route, I can stay at the Y and swim for two sessions instead of just one, Scooter explained. Henry pretended to think it over. Yeah, guess I could find time, he agreed after a moment. Swell, said Scooter, which is kind of like cool. Here's my route book. He pulled a grubby notebook out of his pocket. All the names and addresses of my subscribers are written down, besides stuff like where they want the paper delivered. Like some people want it on the porch, some people want it on their driveway, you know, stuff like that. Oh yeah, sure, said Henry, I know. He flipped through the notebook and then stuffed it into his hip pocket. You have to get all the papers delivered by six o'clock, Scooter cautioned him. If you don't, people will phone and complain and that counts against me. If I don't get any complaints for a whole month, I get a couple of free movie tickets. I'll get them 
delivered, Henry promised. That day was a long one for Henry. Spelling, arithmetic. Do you remember what arithmetic means? Math. Social studies. He thought they would never end. Even recesses and lunch periods seemed to drag. Every few minutes, Henry put his hand on his hip pocket to make sure that precious route book was still there. And then that afternoon, just before the last bell rang, Henry's teacher, Miss Pringle, put down her chalk and turned to the class. Boys and girls, I have an announcement to make, she said. Eh, probably we're supposed to remind our mothers to come to PTA, thought Henry, wishing the last bell would hurry up and ring. Glenwood School is going to have a paper drive to raise money to buy a new curtain for the stage in the school auditorium, Miss Pringle continued. A week from Saturday, all the boys and girls are to bring bundles of newspapers and magazines to the playground. Members of the PTA will be there to measure the bundles, and everyone who brings enough papers to make a stack 30 inches high will win a prize. And besides that, the room that brings in the most papers will win a prize. But remember, all the papers and magazines must be tied in bundles. Robert, who sat across the aisle from Henry, promptly waved his hand. What are the prizes? He asked. Everyone who brings in a stack of papers 30 inches high will get to see a movie in the school auditorium. Miss Pringle paused as if she were about to say something very important. The movie will be shown during school hours. Ooh, the whole class gasped at this news. A movie during school hours? Robert waved his hand again. If our room brought in more papers than any other room, what would we win? Miss Pringle smiled. We would win six dollars to spend any way we pleased. Six dollars, you know, that was a lot back then. Everyone agreed that there were lots of things they could buy with six dollars. Miss Pringle suggested plants for the windowsills. Someone else thought a big bowl of goldfish would be nice. One of the boys suggested a couple of extra baseballs to use during recess, but the girls didn't like that idea. Trying to decide what to do with the money if they won made the contest more interesting. Henry hoped his room would win, but his next thought was that he did not want to go around ringing doorbells asking for old papers, not after ringing doorbells to get rid of the kittens. Everyone in the neighborhood would remember him as the boy with a cellophane-covered box of kittens, and even if they didn't laugh at him, they would look as if they wanted to. Maybe tomorrow he could think of some way to get a lot of old papers. Today he was going to be too busy folding and delivering journals to do anything about a paper drive. When the last bell had finally rung and Henry had started home on his bicycle, his friend Robert caught up with him and rode along beside him. Going to work on the paper drive? Robert asked. Not tonight. I haven't time. I'm taking Scooter's route, Henry said importantly. No kidding? Robert sounded impressed. Yep, said Henry. Maybe I could work on the paper drive tomorrow. I wish there was some way we could get a bunch of papers without going around ringing doorbells and asking. <laughs> you can advertise, said Robert jokingly. That wouldn't work. Besides, it would cost a lot of money, answered Henry, taking Robert's suggestion half seriously. He couldn't afford to have an advertisement printed in the classified section of the newspaper, but there ought to be some way. Hey, exclaimed Henry suddenly. I know what. What? asked Robert. I'm going to advertise, exclaimed Henry. But you just said, Robert began. Never mind, interrupted Henry. You just wait and see. Now, I gotta hurry. See you later. He stood up on the pedals of his bike and rode home as fast as he could. After drinking a glass of milk and sharing two hot dogs with Ribsy and Nosy, don't forget the kitten, he sat down at the typewriter, which was on the desk in the living room. In a drawer, he found typing paper and carbon paper, which he stacked very carefully. First a sheet of white paper, then a sheet of carbon paper, then another sheet of typing paper, until he had five sheets of typing paper and four sheets of carbon paper. Then he rolled the stack into the typewriter. So usually I show this to you guys in, in the classroom. Of course, I don't have it with me right now, but the paper is if, if you write on it and you, um, you can look, you, it's whatever you wrote on the top page will show through to the other pages. So there's like a piece of carbon in between. Hard to explain, much easier to show, but I can't do that right now. Um, here, by the way, is Ribsy and Nosy. <laughs> <clears throat> click, thump, click, click, ping, went the typewriter. Henry enjoyed the sound. It made him feel grown up and businesslike. Thump, click, click, click. He couldn't type very fast because he had to stop and hunt around for each letter. Henry finished what he was writing and stopped to look it over, and it read, 
and it's a mess, I'll show it to you, wanted old moose papers and magazines for the Glenwood School Paper Drive. I will come and get them and tie them in bundles. Foam, Henry Huggins at, and then he has a phone number. Here's the mess he made right here. Yeah, that's a mess. See, there's all sorts of spelling mistakes and capitals where they don't belong. Henry had known there would be some mistakes, but he had, a not, he had not expected so many. He mixed up the M's and the N's, and he could not remember to hit that thing with the makes the capital letters at the right time, you know, the shift key. However, anyone reading his advertisement could tell what he meant, and he was sure he could do better next time. Briskly, quickly, Henry thumped, clicked, and pinged. He glanced at the clock and realized he'd have to hurry if he was going to finish typing up a page of advertise, ugh, advertisements and get them to Mr. Capper's garage in time to fold papers. By the time he reached the bottom of the paper, Henry had produced an advertisement with only four mistakes. He pulled the paper and the carbons out of the typewriter, slipped the carbons out from between the sheets of white paper, found a pair of scissors, and hastily slashed through all five sheets of paper at once. When he had separated all his ads, he stuffed them into his pocket. Ribsy started to follow Henry out the front door, but Henry shoved him back. Mm -mm. You stay home, he ordered. I can't have you getting into fights along the route. This time, when he reached Mr. Capper's garage, Henry did not feel like an outsider. Hi, he said to the other boys in a brief and businesslike way as he dropped his bicycle on the driveway and found the bundle of journals with Scooter's route number written on it. Hello, Mr. Capper. I'm taking Scooter's route today so he can swim two sessions at the Y. Henry quickly counted the papers in the bundle to make sure it had 53 papers before he took a journal from the bundle, laid one of his advertisements on it, and rolled it up. What's this? asked Mr. Capper, looking down over Henry's shoulder, as Henry rolled an advertisement inside a second newspaper. He picked up one of the slips of paper and read it. Henry felt uncomfortable. His typing was not very good, he knew, but he hoped Mr. Capper would not laugh. Maybe his advertisement was a silly idea after all. Maybe people would just look at it and laugh. Mr. Capper grinned and said, Huh, quite an advertising man, aren't you? The other boys looked at Henry's slips of paper. You mean, you're going to put these in Scooter's paper? Asked Joe, one of the eighth grade carriers. I'll bet he isn't going to like that. But I'm the one delivering the papers, protested Henry. Yeah, but it's Scooter's route, the older boy pointed out. Well now, said Mr. Capper, I don't think Scooter can say a word. If he's willing to let Henry do his work for him, he shouldn't object to Henry putting ads in his papers. Probably won't work anyway, said Joe. So here's a picture of all the boys. This is Henry right here. And I usually talk it over with my students too. I get really frustrated when Scooter's like, hey, you can fold my papers. Hey, you can deliver my route and stuff like that. But he's not paying Henry or anything. He's just asking Henry to do all this for him. So basically he's using Henry. This is the part that bothers me. And all at once, Henry's hopes were dashed. Joe was probably right. After all, he was in the eighth grade and he knew a lot about things. Probably people wouldn't bother with his ad. Or if they did take the trouble to read it, they would probably laugh at him the way they laughed when he tried to find good homes for the kittens. Oh, that Henry Huggins, ha ha, they would say. I wonder where he gets so many dumb ideas. Well, it was too late now. He couldn't take time to unroll the papers and remove the advertisements. Quickly and neatly, Henry packed the papers into the canvas bag and lifted it over his shoulders. Man, the bag was heavier than he had expected and made it really awkward for him to ride or mount his bicycle, but Henry didn't care. He was off to deliver a whole paper route all by himself. Good luck, Henry, called Mr. Capper as Henry rode away. Henry's answer was a grin thrown over his shoulder as his bicycle wobbled down the driveway. <sighs> Mr. Capper, the district manager of the journal, had wished him luck. Henry felt so good that he whacked at a tree with a rolled up paper just to hear the noise. On the way to Clickitat Street, the beginning of Scooter's route, Henry had to pass Beezus' house. Beezus and Ramona were out on the sidewalk where Beezus was trying to teach her little sister to jump rope. Oh my. Ramona swung the rope over her head as hard as she could, and when it hit the sidewalk, she carefully stepped over it. No, no, Ramona, cried Beezus. Jump! You're supposed to jump over it. Hi there, Henry called as he sat up straight under his load of journals. Henry, squealed Beezus. Are you delivering papers? Yep, answered Henry modestly. 
Out of the corner of his eye, he could see Ramona staring at him with her mouth wide open, oh, jumping rope in her hands. Henry supposed he did look pretty grown up and important to somebody her age. He hoped he would meet a lot of people he knew. And there's Ramona stepping over her jump rope. <laughs> Delivering papers on Clickitat Street was easy because Henry, who had often seen Scooter cover the route, was already familiar with the customers. He pulled a paper out of the bag and hurled it onto the lawn, and then he rode across the street and tossed a paper onto Mrs. Green's porch. Everyone knew Mrs. Green was very particular about having the paper left on her porch, and Henry was not going to have Scooter getting any complaints. He zigzagged down the street, throwing papers to the right and to the left. This was the life! As Henry delivered the papers, the canvas bag on his shoulders became lighter and lighter. So did his spirits. It was with special pleasure that he threw a paper onto the steps of Scooter's own house. Henry hoped that Scooter would be the one to pick it up and carry it into the house when he came home from the Y. When Henry finished delivering the papers, it was a quarter to six and the street lights were coming on. Perhaps he had been a little slow, but he still had 15 minutes to spare. Not bad, not bad at all, he thought, as he pedaled happily homeward. The canvas bag on his shoulder seemed wonderfully light and Henry whistled through his teeth. This ought to show Mr. Capper who could deliver papers. Hi, Mom, said Henry as he went into the kitchen. Something sure smells good. He stooped to pet Nosy, who was sitting beside the refrigerator. Time to wash for dinner, answered Mrs. Huggins. And by the way, Henry, Mrs. Jones and a Mrs. Oswald called and they left their addresses. They said they had some papers for the Glenwood School paper drive. They did? exclaimed Henry in astonishment. He had been thinking so hard about the paper route, he had completely forgotten about his advertisements. And now his typewritten slips were getting results, even if they did have some mistakes. Huh, what do you know, thought Henry, as he considered this piece of good news. Henry discovered that he was unusually hungry. Dad, serve me an extra thick hunk of meatloaf, please, he requested as the family sat down to the table. Not hunk, Henry, corrected Mrs. Huggins, slice. Okay, slice, said Henry cheerfully. He had a feeling, now that he had actually delivered papers, that the day when he would have his own paper route was not far off. And his 11th birthday was getting closer every day, too. In the meantime, there was the paper drive. From the way things looked, his advertisement was going to keep him busy. And it did, too. That evening, Henry received half a dozen phone calls. If there's 12 in a dozen, what's half of that? right? That's in sign language six, right? You guys know that. <laughs> From people who had old papers and magazines they wanted hauled away. On the way to school the next morning, Henry tried to figure out how he could handle the old papers and magazines. The thing to do, he decided, was to borrow a wagon. His own had been given to a rummage sale long ago and pile of papers. Oh, oh, sorry. Anyway, use a wagon and pile the papers in his garage. Then he could tie them in bundles later. Beezus and her little sister Ramona had a wagon that he was sure he could borrow, and Beezus would probably be glad to help. After all, they were in the same room at school, and Beezus was a sensible girl. Henry was parking his bike in the rack when Scooter arrived. Hi, said Henry. I got your papers delivered, okay? What's the big idea anyway? demanded Scooter, putting those crummy ads in my papers. Uh, I was the one delivering the papers, protested Henry. It's my route, Scooter raised his voice. Well, Mr. Capper said I could, Henry pointed out, certain that he was right, but at the same time not wanting Scooter to be angry with him. I don't see what, oh, no, I don't care what Mr. Capper said, yelled Scooter. It was cheating, that's what it was. By now, the boys and girls on the school grounds were beginning to take enough interest in the argument to gather around the bike racks to listen. It was not cheating, said Henry heatedly. Scooter couldn't call him a cheater. You didn't want to deliver your papers last night. Mr. Capper said it was all right for me to put the ad in. If you had delivered the papers, you could have put the ad in yourself if you had thought of it. Ooh, the suggestion that he might not have even thought of advertising made Scooter even more angry. Ha, he scoffed. Anyway, it was a dumb ad and I bet it won't work. It will too work. Henry could not resist bragging. It worked already. Eight people have called, and I bet a whole bunch more call today. So there, that ought to settle Scooter. But it didn't. It only made Scooter matter. 
All right for you, Henry Huggins, he shouted. You don't need to hang around my paper out anymore wanting to fold papers. That stopped Henry. To have Scooter come right out and accuse him of hanging around startled him. Hanging around? He did not like the sound of the words at all. Don't worry, he said hotly. I wouldn't fold your old papers for a million dollars. Not much you wouldn't, retorted Scooter. And you can find somebody else to do your work for you, answered Henry. I think Henry's right, someone said. I don't, said someone else. I think Scooter's right. Suddenly, everyone was arguing with everyone else. Beezus pushed her way through the crowd. Scooter McCarthy, she said fiercely. I think you're mean. Just because you're too lazy to deliver your own papers, you have to go and pick on Henry. You ought to fake him, that's what. <laughs> and here they are arguing. This is Beezus. That's Scooter. <laughs> Henry. Goodness gracious. Henry's feelings were all mixed up. He was glad to have some support from Beezus, but at the same time, he wished she would keep out of the quarrel. He did not want the whole school teasing him about a girl. So there, said Beezus, and stamped her foot at Scooter. Plainly, Scooter did not like being picked on by a girl. Just the same, he said. Henry better. The bell rang, and Scooter stopped. The crowd broke up, and the boys and girls began to make their way into the school building. Just the same, muttered Henry. We'll see whose room wins the old paper drive. He was not sure whether Scooter had heard him or not, but he hoped he had. Beezus likes Henry, somebody chanted. Beezus likes Henry. Hanging around? The unpleasant sound of the words still rang in Henry's ears. They made him feel like someone who was in the way, like a nuisance. That was the last thing he wanted to be. He only wanted a chance to show Mr. Capper that he was a good businessman. Well, that chance was gone now. Even if Scooter got over being mad, Henry knew he would never go back to Mr. Capper's garage again. I didn't want that old route anyway, Henry tried to persuade himself, but he could not make himself believe it. And that's the end of a chapter. Tomorrow is chapter four, The Paper Drive. And I just want to remind your parents one more time that I would love to start doing Zoom just to connect with my kiddos. This is my email. Please email me and let me know. Um, put in the subject your child's name. And just let me know if your child's interested. I can send you the link for the Zoom meetings um, in the email. All right. Please stay safe. I love you guys. Um, whew, we still have one month to go. I'm so over March. One more day of that. Then we'll get through April. And then we can see each other again, I hope. All right. I love you guys. Stay safe. Please don't go anywhere. Just stay home. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.